Welcome back to Grade 12 Physics. We're looking at Chapter 2.3, Forces Acting on an Inclined Plane. This is based on the work of the textbook from, by Walding and follows the Queensland curriculum. So we've talked before about um, free body diagrams and forces on a, a stationary object. Now we're looking at an object sitting on an inclined plane and how the forces start to affect that. Got a few stimulus questions there for you to have a think about. Some of the steepest roads in the world. Two there on the left are in um, New Zealand, and the one on the right over in Wales, which just became the steepest road in the world. It's worth looking up. Okay, so what's our chance today? We're going to describe forces acting on an object on an inclined plane using free body diagrams. Like the question asks, do you remember what a free body diagram was? It was the one where we had an object, and we had such as the force of gravity on it, the normal force, things like that, acting on the object. We'll calculate the net force acting on an object on an inclined plane through our vector analysis. And the net result of this, by the end of this, we'll be able to, in familiar and unfamiliar situations, calculate the forces on an object. All right, now why do we look at inclined planes? So let's look at another dead white guy, Galileo Galilei. So he lived quite some time ago, and basically he was trying to study motion and uh, motion due to gravity, but he realised that the instruments he had at the time just were not good enough to measure accurately how an object was falling, particularly over the types of scenarios he'd have within a laboratory. But what he realised, that um, free fall is a special case of an inclined plane. When an object is in free fall, it's almost like it's an object rolling down an inclined plane, except the angle of that plane when it's in free fall is basically 90 degrees. There's still accelerating occurring. An object rolling down a plane still has acceleration down the track, but it's down the track. And what he started to do was to resolve these forces and say, well, we've got gravity acting down, but the object is accelerating down the ramp and there is frictional forces and so on involved in that. And he was the one that started to work that out. So using an inclined plane was basically a way of getting around the fact that the instruments he had at the time to measure free fall just were not good enough. All right, and this here is your classic um, free body diagram for an object uh, moving down a ramp. So this is what he worked out in 1589, and we still do it today. Now, note on our object, it's an object with mass m. We have the force of gravity, which we saw last lesson, mass times gravity. But that is at an angle to the inclined plane, which is this angle here and we can resolve it into two components. Because it's a vector, we can resolve it into this particular one running down the ramp and running into the ramp. Note that the normal force is equal to the force that's parallel. So this is the force, oh sorry, perpendicular. This is the force perpendicular to the plane, the inclined plane, which we work out with F cos theta, which is the same in magnitude as the normal force. So we're going to break this down a little bit and look at how we get to this. But note the little study tip on the side. It's worth knowing these two uh, formula by heart because it makes your life a lot easier. Note, however, in there that it's got mg in that equation, whereas I used f, but we know what that is because it's Newton's second law, f equals ma. Acceleration is gravity. Uh, there's challenge questions throughout this. I do encourage you to stop and have a look at those and see if you can work out the answers. All right, so vector analysis. We're gonna look at four cases of inclined plane. We're gonna look at sliding down with no friction, sliding down with friction, and then dragging up the plane with no friction and up the incline with no friction, with friction. We do study these things with and without friction. There are some situations we have, such as an object in free fall in um, an environment like space where there is no atmosphere to slow it down, there is no friction. But it's often uh, simpler to look at the frictionless case before we add in the extra parameter of having friction there, which is just an extra um, calculation that you've got to account for. Just makes your life a bit easier doing it in this format. So we're going to go down the ramp with no friction, then with friction, and then we're going to go up the ramp with no friction and with friction. Right, okay, case one, sliding down the ramp, no friction. Notice on that free body diagram over here, there's no frictional force opposing the forward motion of the 
mass down the ramp. So we often refer to a smooth surface in physics and that means a frictionless surface. Is the surface really frictionless? No. It could be really, really low friction, like really good uh, bearings and so on on rollers, but it could be just such a case that the friction is so small, it's negligible in the situation. If we're looking at, say, a, um, a ramp where boxes roll down rollers into load trucks and things like that, the friction of the rollers really isn't that important in moving the box down the ramp to get it into the truck, so that's why we consider these no friction examples. Okay, so the force is perpendicular to the plane uh, balanced, is what we're talking about here. What that means is this force perpendicular is equal to the normal force, and that's the equal and opposite reaction that we had uh, from Newton. The implication of this is those forces don't really come into it. So the important one that we start to look at is the force down the plane. Okay. So the two perpendicular forces don't really come into it. The net parallel force is that one there. And we have a nice little um, equation that we've worked out, F sine theta. And you can work out with your trigonometry, you know, sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse plug in where, where your angle you've got your angle there you know your hypotenuse is this main force of gravity here which is mg you can work out that that's the equation we use how's it all relate to newton's second law because as we've seen that is just f equals ma okay so what this ends up telling us is that once we sort of resolve all this Mass doesn't have a huge component in there. There is a component in there because we still have this force of gravity here, which still has mass in there. All right? But the big deciding factor is going to end up being the force of gravity. Let's look at an example. 15 kilo bag of fertilizer. There's our mass. It's allowed to slow freely down a smooth, frictionless 30 degree incline. The net force down the incline and the acceleration of the object. First question I want you to pause and think about is, what's the formula we need? It was on the previous slide. If you can't remember it, stop this recording, go back a little bit, write it down. You need to know that formula. Okay, so the uh, net force down the incline is mg sine theta, which was f sine theta, f due to gravity sine theta. We've just swapped this term with mg because f equals mg. Okay, that's your formula you need to know. Put it in your head now. So then it's just a matter of plugging in. The mass is 15 because it told us up here. Gravity is 9.8 because it's a constant. The angle is 30 degrees because it told us up here. Plug that into your calculator. The force is 73.5 newtons down the ramp. That is parallel to the ramp. So if we look at our ramp here, here's our object. This force parallel to the ramp is that one there. All right, acceleration of the object. Well, that's F equals MA. Now, I know that acceleration is G, G to gravity, but we're looking at this in a slightly different way. Newton's second law tells us force is mass times acceleration, but we don't get all the force of gravity because as you saw, gravity is acting down but we're only looking at this component that goes down the ramp. That's the acceleration component we're looking at. Part A told us what the force was. So that gives us this term. We know this term. That's the one we're gonna find. Put your numbers in that like we've got on the next line here. Do the maths, 4.9 meters per second squared. It's an acceleration, so it's meters per second squared. And we've met, specified it's down the incline, not in any other direction. All right, case two, sliding down with friction. So the only difference here is we've got this friction opposing the acceleration down the ramp. And those two forces are we gonna, we've got to look at. So this is a more realistic example. Think of a slippery slide you know, in the park or, or a water slide or something, that sort of thing. There's always some friction holding you back, particularly the example I've given you there, a water slide with no water generally has a lot of friction and you can't slide very well at all. That brings us to this next point here. 
If the force parallel to the incline and the force of friction are equal to each other, the net result of that is not necessarily that the object won't move. The net result of that is that acceleration is zero. There is no net acceleration. So that tells us that if the object is stationary to start with, it will stay stationary. If the object is moving, it will continue to move. It will stay doing whatever it's doing until an external force acts on it. And that external force comes from acceleration. Another example here, once again, think about the formulas that you need before we move on. What have we got? A 34 kilo child on a slippery slide. There's our angle. The frictional force is this. Determine the motion of the child. So what do we need to know? We need to know what is the force parallel to the incline. And we need to compare that with the frictional force. Don't forget, learn your formulas because you need to know them. Mg sine theta, plug your numbers in. The mass is 34 because it told us. 9.8 because that's a constant. Theta is 40 because it told us. Okay, plug all that to your calculator and that gives us that the net force acting down the incline is 214 newtons. Oh, sorry, the, the force parallel to the incline. The next step is this net force. That is, here's the, the, the child sitting on the slippery slide. The force down is 214 newtons, but we have the force of friction opposing that. So, simple math tells us that the force down minus the frictional force, subtract them, and that's the net force on the child. 214 minus the 110 that we were given up the top here, 104 newtons is the force down the incline. Now the question is the same as what we did last time. Find the acceleration, and F equals MA, rearrange it like we did before, plug the numbers in, 3.06. Okay. The only difference between this one and the last case is we have the frictional force, so we have this extra step here. Okay. Okay, so we've looked at the scenarios going down the incline, now we're looking at the scenarios going up the incline. So the difference here is we now have this tension, this force of tension, that is pulling the block back up the incline, which is going to overcome the gravity, or more correctly, the force that's acting parallel to the inclined surface. So tension is introduced by some rope, cable, something up here to pull it up the hill, up the incline. Think towing a car up the hill, think a mine cart being pulled up out of the mine, think about a cable ferry, like a ferry that runs across the river and has a cable to pull itself either across the river, a little bit old school, but they exist. Um, that would be a special example where the angle is N0. Um, the force of tension in the cable has to overcome the weight. Okay, that's what I said before. That has got to be bigger than this force here, or the net force is the difference in those two to determine whether the block will move up or not. All right, let's look at an example. What do we know? 525 kilogram coal truck is pulled up a 25 degree incline by a cable from the surface. If the cart moves up the track at a constant speed, calculate the tension in the cable. So think about what we're doing here. We have an incline, it's 25 degrees. We have a mass that is being pulled up that incline. We have to calculate this force of tension up here in the cable. Once again, think about the formulas you're gonna need. It's just an application of what we've done before. Okay, so what do we know? We know the net force is zero because it's traveling at a constant speed. It says it's moving at a constant speed, so the net force on it must be zero. That therefore tells us that the force of tension is equal to the force parallel to the incline. They're equal and opposite forces. Um, so, down the bottom here, the force parallel to the incline Back to the formula, it's the same formula we used before, mg sine theta. All right. Think about on our incline, we have our cart, that force parallel down the incline. It's always the same formula. Plug in what you know. We know the mass because it told us up here. 
we know g because it's a constant and we know theta because it told us up there plug in your numbers and the force parallel is 2174 newtons down the incline note that bit there down the incline okay that is the force parallel we know it's that because it tells us there it's going down the incline so state that it's going down the incline so hence the force of tension must be the same up the incline the force that way force of tension must be equal because we know that it's traveling at a constant speed all right special example of what we've just talked about is this thing called the atwards machine it's basically the an, an abbreviation of this uh, or a modification of this where we have a pulley at the top here and there's a mass hanging off it and that mess mass has this force pulling it down which is creating tension in the rope here which creates the tension up there so that's the only difference uh, the Egyptians used to use things like this or overhead electric train lines I'll show you in just a minute but once again came from a dead white guy George Atwood okay who was basically studied this, this sort of setup to study the physics of it um, think about this picture in the middle here pretty simple example where Egyptians are using like a rope roll around a, a make that makeshift pulley sort of system they pull down the hill which is easy to pull the block up the hill or train lines where you have a mass like this hanging down a system of pulleys at the top here which is there's a very shot of it there and that creates the tension here which is the tension on the actual lines that uh, the electricity lines and so on for the train line to run on okay so let's have a think about this what's the stored energy that's being used in this scenario the stored energy is the potential energy in this mass because this mass has a force of gravity that it can fall to notice we've called that fg2 to distinguish it from the, the main block over there we generally ignore the mass of the cable and the pulley friction the cable that runs this system generally has a mass that's insignificant compared to the main mass we're talking about or our second mass and the friction of the pulley is generally not enough to worry about so can we use Newton's second law to calculate the force of tension yes we can because this force here is the same as this force here this force here is being applied by this mass uh, and gravity so force is mass times gravity but the mass we're using in this case is mass 2 so mass 2 times the gravity all right so the three possible scenarios of motion of the main block well the block could move down the incline as in this uh, this force here is less than this one over here and hence the net force is that it'll move back down the incline it could be the opposite where the force down here is larger than the force parallel to the incline in which case the block will move up the incline or the block could um, stay at a constant velocity as in those two forces are equal to each other constant velocity means it'll either sit still if it's sitting still or it will move if it's already moving all right let's look at this example again i've got a picture there of some mine carts where there's a mass set up to pull the uh, mine cart up the hill which is sort of an alternate version of using like an engine like that sort of setup um, on the right hand side there we've got pictures of cable cars in um, san francisco i found that uh, when san francisco was developing that the hills were too steep for horses to pull carriages up the hill for the more wealthy inhabitants so they installed a cable car system like a train system tram type system kind of like what's in melbourne however it was too hard to get the trams up and down the hill so they, they're called cable cars because under the road here there is a cable that the tram clamps onto and that's what creates the tension to pull the cable car up the hill and yes people do stand on the outside of it like that all right let's look at our example the 525 kilo coal cart 25 degree incline now a hanging mass of 300 kilograms is used to provide the applied force the tension determine the motion of the cart go back to our free body diagram if we have uh, this tension 
up here. Okay, we can work out the force down that way. We can work out this tension because it comes from this mass over here. Let's have a look at how we do that. So the force is down the incline is what we're looking at first. And it's the same formula, mg sine theta. But notice that we've specified m1 because we're talking about the main mass, m1. That's 525 kilos because it came from our question. 9.8 is a constant and 25 degrees from up there. Plug it into your calculator. The force parallel to the incline is 20, 2174 newtons. Then we're looking at the hanging mass. And that was uh, F equals mg. And we're talking about mass 2 now, which is the 300 kilos, which is that one there, times the 9.8, which is our constant, 2940. So what does that interestingly tell us? This force of tension in the cable is bigger than the force down the incline, so it's going to move up the incline. The 300 kilogram mass will move the coal cart that weighs over half a ton. So that's our calculation down here. Subtract the two, the force uh, Fg2, the force of the gravity of the mass, mass two, minus the force parallel to the incline. Subtract those figures, 766 newtons up the incline. So that's the tension in the cable, okay? From that, we need to find the acceleration, which is just F equals MA rearranged. We know the net force, because it was right there. We know the mass, because we know the masses of the objects. Now, this is where it takes a slight turn. Notice what we've done here, 525 plus 300. Because we have an incline, we have our mass, that bloke is the 525 kilograms. And then we have this mass here, which is the 300. So the mass of the system is both of these together. And that's why we've done that just there. Plug that to the calculator and the acceleration is 0.928 meters per second up the incline. And notice how we've written that as a nice worded statement at the end. That's a good practice to get into. All right, so what does all this tell us? As the angle um, changes, the angle of our uh, incline, all right, we have to change the amount of mass here, which will change the motion of this cart. So Fg2 is proportional to g sine theta. As this mass changes, the acceleration on this cart starts to change. And you can do experiments with this one, a bit like our little task down here. Um, as the angle changes to keep the cart stationary, so as this angle here of the incline changes, in order to keep that car stationary, this mass has to then change, okay? Because they're all proportional to each other. And that's what our heading tells us. When the cart is stationary, the forces are balanced, and that is that force down due to gravity of that mass and that force down the incline, the force parallel to the incline. All right, last one, same scenario, except this time we have a force of friction. Now, this is obviously more likely because friction is involved, but the, difference, the only thing we've added here is this bloke here. And that's the extra thing you have to include in your calculations. Everything else is the same. We still have the force parallel to the surface, the incline, we still have the tension, we still have the force of gravity of mass two, we've still got the normal force, the perpendicular force, all that's still there. It's just that because the mass is moving up the incline, you would expect there to be a frictional force slowing it down. Let's look at the example. Another example of 20 degrees is wine carts pulled up the incline, an applied force provided by a hanging mass over the pulley system. The filled cart, so the mine cart, is 750 kilos. And the frictional force that's holding it back is 1036 newtons. Let's have a look at this. So that's 20 degrees. There's our mass. That's 750 kilograms. Is that one? There is a force of friction. And we're going over the pulley. And we have another mass here, 383 kilograms because it told me that there. 
okay determine what happens with the cart so what are we going to need to find out we need to know this force force of gravity on this object here we need to compare that with the, f the net force down here so there's the force that's parallel to the surface work out the net force with these two work out how they compare to that and that will tell us whichever one's biggest is the motion of the cart all right so forces down the incline we've got a couple of components there the force parallel to the incline and the frictional force the parallel to the incline is the um, mg sine theta mg is that f due to gravity what is the mass of the cart 750 gravity is constant 20 degrees and this one we were given because it gave it to us up there and there it is there plug it into calculator that tells us the net total force is going down the incline is 3550 newtons all right now force of the hanging mass that's f2g it's our simple formula again what is the hanging mass it is 383 kilos so there it is gravity gives us that so let's go back to our diagram we have our object we know that we have a net force down of 3550 newtons we know that we have a net force of tension which comes from the hanging mass 3753 newtons so we can instantly look at that and say that the object is going to go up the incline because that one's bigger that's a bigger force than the other one they're not balanced so it will be accelerating up the incline and that's what this tells us we subtract those two numbers a net force of 203 newtons up the incline put it into f equals ma don't forget to add our masses together because the total system has a bigger mass we are accelerating this mass as well as the one hanging off the string as well that's why we add those two together 0.179 meters per second squared up the incline okay all right that little point down the bottom here you can have a look at that one in your own time a little bit of an extension here train wheels train wheels tend to be very low friction so my question is what are the two reasons for that number one is they don't distort very much because they're very hard steel and number two they have such a small contact area with the actual track so because they're such low friction that's awesome to move big weights but the problem is when we need to um, stop in wet weather or on inclines it makes it harder to stop particularly when you've got hundreds of tons of mass so what do the trains do they often um, inject um, sand down here between the track and the wheel and that sand creates a bit of grit which is a little bit more friction to help it slow down if you ever go somewhere that's got trams like the Gold Coast or down to Melbourne in wet weather you look inside the track there's usually a little sort of gutter in the track down here and you start to see the sand deposit in there which is uh, left over from the grit and they have to refill that um, sand container each time that uh, it's used up in the rain okay We've been through our learning intentions. I think we've covered all that in a lot of different situations, moving up an incline and down an incline with and without friction. The formulas are all the same, so make sure you remember them. Have a go at the check your learning questions, and I hope you don't feel like Ralph does about physics. Thanks for coming.